Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Evans, and my company, the Rachel Evans Group, is a company who provides executive coaching, leadership development, um, team development, and uh, also establishing strong culture for other companies. And when I'm talking today about how to lead through turbulence, lead your team to be the most productive they can be through all of this huge change and remain engaged. Um, when I started uh, with my own stay-at-home order and many of my clients started with the stay-at-home orders, I noticed that there was a lot of turmoil individually for people and with teams, a lot of confusion. And so that's when I started delving into some of my research on how to manage change and then also getting some empathy across my clients for what they're going through now. This is very unprecedented for me, unprecedented for all of you. And so how can I help you all to get through this time and come out the other side really successful? So first, let me tell you a little bit about my company. Let's see, uh, just so you know who we are. So uh, I have 15 years experience in both innovation and coaching and adult learning. Uh, I, well, I focus on the coaching side and really helping companies build strong culture and strong teams that are high performing, it's always done through the principles of innovation. I was on the small team that brought innovation and design thinking to Intuit. And ever since, I have really applied those principles of deep empathy, ideation, experimentation, measuring to all of the principles of adult learning and coaching. And that has enabled us to provide programs and coaching that are twice as effective as um, normal or traditional coaching and training methods. So that's who we are. The other thing I wanted to say is that, you know, presentations are not my style of choice. Right now we have to do that because we can't get into a conference room together and talk together. But uh, I am offering, uh, after this, uh, an hour of free coaching with you or with your team to discuss any of the things I talk about today and also to just understand how you can help your specific culture and your specific team manage through these times. The, a link to my calendar and also my email I'll provide at the end and also I think will be provided through the conference. So. On today's agenda, we're going to talk about your challenges that I'm hearing that my clients are facing. Um, we're going to talk about change versus transformation and how it starts with you and then strategies for managing this transition that we're all in. So first, our challenges. What I'm hearing from you and experiencing myself, of course, are the rapid change and complexity of the change are huge. This volatile situation we're in is causing us to have multiple big changes at once. We have our children at home. We have changes at work. We have social distancing and not being able to even visit our families. There are all of these crazy changes that are happening right now. And that's causing fear and confusion, uh, fear that we might get sick, fear that we might lose our job, fear that we'll never see our families again, which of course we will. Um, but this diminishes our ability to be creative problem solvers and be productive. We'll talk more about that later. We're also facing ambiguity. It's really disconcerting not to have the answers of what's gonna happen. And it makes things unpredictable. So it's really difficult to plan for a future when we don't know what will happen and unforeseen challenges are popping up every day that we couldn't possibly have, have anticipated. So how do we get through all this? 
Well, there's a man who wrote a book many years ago, Managing Transitions, who talks about how we get through change as people. And he says change is situational. Transition, on the other hand, is psychological. It's not those events, but rather the inner or reorientation or redefinition that you have to go through in order to incorporate any of the changes in your life. Without transition, the change is just a rearrangement of the furniture. So nothing so undermines organizational change or any of the changes we're going through as the failure to think through the losses people face. Now, what does he mean by all of this? Well, in short, there's change and then there's transition and both have to happen. The change is situational, like you move to a new site. Your kids are now at home until August or September. Um, you change org structure. You change your strategy. A lot of that's happening right now. But the transition for the people involved is a three-phase process that you go through to come to terms with the reality of the new situation. And we cannot ignore that transition. So let's talk about what those phases are. Uh, Bridges talks about first, the first phase is actually the ending. The ending you need to make to leave your old situation behind the losses you are facing due to the change. For instance, I've lost my freedom to go anywhere I please. I've lost my time because I have a toddler at home and at least six hours out of my day are dealing with her and, and managing that. Uh, I'm fearing losing my job or maybe my husband lost his job. So, People through this ending phase, they can either deny that these losses are happening, which means they don't move out of the ending phase, or they might feel a lot of fear, whether they consciously realize it or not. Uh, they're really grieving this loss, and so that causes a lot of overreactions to the change, if you've seen any of that, like overreactions to things that are happening. In the neutral zone, this is what happens after you've dealt with the losses, but then you move into this neutral zone between the old way and the new way. And this is where the ambiguity is high. Everything is in flux. A lot of us are in this right now. Um, and anxiety rises. Motivation falls. I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but I was talking to a client the other day that said, hey, I just this weekend picked up my paintbrush and painted all weekend. I was so motivated and it made me feel so good. But in the last five days, I've picked up the paintbrush and cannot get myself to put it on the page. And I think that a lot of people, and including myself, are experiencing that a day to day. Am I going to be motivated to get through all this today? Or do I just need to take a break? Can I get on these meetings? People are really going through that. And that's because we're in this like flux, in this neutral zone. And people, when they're leaving the old and they have all of this new potential stuff happening, they start to feel overwhelmed, disoriented. They start to doubt themselves. Priorities are getting really confused. And this is from, I've talked to almost all of my clients, and these are patterns we're seeing. Um, and they're really speaking meaning. I've heard several times, ah, does this, any of this really even matter, this work that I'm doing, that they've never thought about before? So that's the neutral zone. Then once you come out of this neutral zone, and by the way, the neutral zone is also a time of a lot of creativity and innovation if we can inspire that in people. Because all the old rules have been thrown out the window we're open to improving things and making things new and being creative. We'll talk about that later. And then the third phase is new beginning, the release of new energy in a new direction. So we have new insights. We have new purpose. We're motivated to make the change we need to change to be even better. For some, this lull in the neutral zone felt a little bit like a holiday because everything slows down. So for some, it might be hard to ramp back up again into normal productivity. Um, but everyone is needing a tangible way to participate in whatever is new, the new strategy, the new way of life, 
the new rules, whatever it is, a tangible way to participate. So let's look at that in terms of productivity. What happens is as you get into that neutral zone, you are dipping, naturally dipping in productivity because of the confusion, the feeling overwhelmed, the lack of motivation, even a psychological lack of motivation, you start to become less productive. And we, a lot of us, have even more hit on our productivity because we have family members at home who need us throughout the day. Uh, so productivity at work is even harder. And I'm hearing a lot of people feel that they feel guilty as their productivity and their you know, motivation is waning. And so you can see that it's very, very normal. And people have to go through it. They can't just go from a quick ending to excitement about the new beginning and being productive again. So understanding this is critical to managing people through all of this change. So I'd love to ask you, where is your team, do you think, on this curve? Where are you on this curve? The first thing to managing all of this is starting with you. So the brain, let's talk about how the brain works for a minute. When a person receives a threat like COVID-19, like potentially losing their job, like their way of life being turned upside down, their limbic system takes over, which means it's the fight or flight. It thinks, am I safe? Do people want me? You know, there's a lot of fear associated with your limbic brain. And emotions run high when that brain takes over. And what it does is it cuts off that free prefrontal cortex where you have empathy and insight and intuition and modulating your fear and all of these things that are necessary to get through tough times, that creative problem solving. It's all limited when your limbic brain takes over. So we want to access that prefrontal cortex as much as we possibly can. Now, how do we do this in these crazy times? Well, number one, center on your purpose and your values. Why are you doing this work? Why is it important to you? What do you care about most? And are you making decisions right now that are based on what you hold dear, what your values are, that will ground you significantly. Then also, focus on the reality of the situation, hopefully without a lot of judgment. So like I say here, we are being faced with months of silo and our kids being home and um, the oncoming recession. It will pass eventually. But we need to deal with it and reality. What I have noticed is my clients who are still in the mode of, it's got to be over soon. Uh, you know, I can, just, I can just hold on until it's over. And trying to hold on to the old way of life and just power through, they're the ones that are having the hardest time dealing and being there for others. Whereas those who are saying, you know what? Yep, it's going to be months before my kids go back to school. It's going to be months before we understand fully the ramifications of this COVID-19 thing. So I am going to create new patterns. I'm going to create new routines. I'm going to do what it takes to make my life meaningful and positive now, even though this may be over in a couple months. So start creating those you know, new routines, new life patterns. Don't live in this hey, it's going to be over soon, um, version of reality. And third, create that space for self-care. I know none of us have the time for it, but it is inc you are incredibly more productive and better as a parent, better as a worker, better as a leader, if you are getting some self-care. So take the time to exercise every day, even if it's 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever you can get or meditation, or me time, get that time so that you can be centered, and that means you can center the people around you. Now, let's talk about strategies for managing this transition. 
So during the ending phase, now remember this is where people need to let go of the old way before they can kind of move through to a new way um, of working and being. First, and if I, you only come away with one thing from this whole presentation, it's empathize. Understand the losses people are feeling, the challenges they're having, and acknowledge those. Don't pretend like it's all rosy. Don't gloss over it because you don't want to um, propagate hard feelings. People are feeling it. You need to acknowledge it, and you need to understand it. And as a matter of fact, those of my clients who are doing the best with their teams are actually connecting with their teams at least once a week with their direct reports. And their direct reports are connecting with their direct reports at least once a week. And not just on how's the work going, but starting with, well, how are you personally? What challenges are you facing at home, working from home? What are you going through? What's working, you know, what are the challenges at work? And then what's working for you? What can I share with others? But making sure to connect and really empathize and understand what's going on for them uh, is so important through this whole time, not just for a week, but through the whole time. Now, second would be to then focus on the long-term vision. What is going to prepare you for success? when the world bounces back. What can you actually count on that you can focus your team on so that they have meaning and so that you know that the work that they're doing is actually going to be meaningful and actually help with your success coming out the other end of this crisis. Now, I have one client, for instance, who went back to their strategy. This is a global client. They went back to their strategy and said, you know what? It is not appropriate at all right now for us to market to our customers. So we're going to shift and look at the parts of our strategy that are building up our back end and our structure and fixing some of the things that are broken, that have been ignored in our strategy for a while. That's where we're gonna spend our efforts and our resources is to get us ready to go when it's time to move forward and market again. That's one example. Now, because times are ambiguous, we know that the long term can be elusive. Where are we going to head? Um, what's the world gonna be like in a few months? So if it's too, elusive the long term think about the next quarter where do you want everyone focusing their efforts in the next quarter I had one client who decided we are going to stop building our regular tools for SMB or we're only going to build the things that are absolutely necessary right now but we are going to focus our vision on how do we help small businesses stay alive during COVID-19. That gave everyone in the company meaning and excitement, and they have produced, within a couple days, several tools that are going to help small businesses stay alive. So focus on a vision and make it clear. Next is narrow to the extreme critical few. Now I know as businesses, we all have the critical many, and we have too many things on our plate. Well, remember that your workforce right now is probably at, at best 70% productivity. And some folks, when they have kids at home, are at about 50% productivity. So you need to narrow to a realistic number of things that you can accomplish during this few months or as you dip in that productivity. So be ruthless and focus on the most critical few so that your folks can do that well. Uh, look back at your strategy. What makes sense to tackle now? What can we eliminate or postpone now? And even ask your employees, what work do you have that kind of seems irrelevant right now? They might have other ideas about what you can cut so you can focus on doing a few things really well. And the last thing here, and this moves through 
all of the phases is over communicate. A lot of times as leaders, we don't want to communicate unless we know the answers. We don't want to give a wrong answer. And in the absence of communication from your leadership, people assume the worst. Oh, I'm going to get laid off. Oh, we're not going anywhere. We're a mess. Oh, you know, I mean, there are so many ways they fill in the gap. And so what you want to do is over communicate all the time. You want it to be simple. Do not have it complicated. Simply communicate. Have it heartfelt and empathetic. And then reveal what you know now. Don't wait until you have all the answers. Right now, you're not going to. Everything's changing all the time. Reveal what you know now and what you still don't know, and also what has changed since last time you communicated. The recommendation here is to communicate to your whole company, maybe in all hands, once a week. The companies that I uh, am seeing are doing better through all of this and keeping their employees more motivated and moving is um, are the companies that are doing maybe a weekly one hour uh, all hands meeting where everyone can dial in. They talk about what is happening. They talk about what's changed since last week. They talk about what they still don't know. And then they leave a ton of time for answering real questions from real employees, which helps to not only answer those questions for people, but also it helps you empathize. What are their fears? What are the questions they're having? So spend a lot of time here because these are important things to do. Now, now let's talk about the neutral zone, this dip in productivity um, and yet exciting time for potentially innovation. What are some of these strategies? Number one, you need to show patience and empathy. You may already be in that zone of new beginnings and excited about where your company is going to go, but remember, your whole company probably isn't there yet. So keep checking in weekly. Recognize new realities and adapt. An example of this was when one of my clients, who also is global, uh, made the call to have everybody work from home. They quickly realized that, especially in places like Japan, they the apartments people were working in didn't have proper places to do work. And as they realized that this was going to be months of working at home, they quickly recognized that we need to have people comfortable and have good places to work at home. And they allowed anyone without prior approval to purchase up to $500 of equipment or desks or chairs, whatever they needed, to be comfortable working at home. Um, that's just one example of how you recognize the reality and you adapt your policy to do that. Um, also, it's important to combat burnout. So your employees, especially if they care about the company and they probably are caring a lot about keeping their job, they are working overtime right now. Uh, I've heard it from so many people, they're working you know, they're being mom or dad in the daytime, and then they're staying up all hours to try to finish their work. And one of my clients I talked to the other day was at the edge of panic because she didn't understand why she was four weeks behind, even though they had laid off some folks and also um, didn't understand, you know, that cur curve, that dip in productivity that happened. And she was working all hours. She was just, she was almost broken. Uh, and it was because her company was expecting her to maintain the same amount of, the same timeline on deliveries and deliverables and the same amount of work through this time. And it's just not possible. So what we're seeing is that the companies that are recognizing that there is a dip in productivity and they are being patient with people and even revising their, um, their sorry, employee uh, measurements. Oh, my brain just, <laughs> just had a little bit of a um, 
glitch there. Um, the performance evaluations, looking at those, seeing how that they can give a little bit of space for their employees to be successful and combat that burnout, especially with the uh, critical few as well. Sorry about that. Uh, the second thing is just be nimble. Everything's changing all the time. Revise your policies and empower people to make decisions faster and make their own decisions. As things are changing all the time, uh, don't you want people who are in the work and doing the work to be able to make the right decisions for your company and not have a million uh, approvals to get through? Try to revise things so that people are empowered. Also, resist rigid plans. Plan for constant learning and pivoting and be okay with, hey, this is the direction we're headed. We're gonna try this this week. If it doesn't work, we're gonna try something else. Um, that experimental mindset is really important right now as no plan is, no rigid plan is going to work all the way through because things are changing so quickly in our world, in your businesses, in our economy. Also maintain this sense of urgency. Now this doesn't mean push, 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 you have to get it done. It's more how do we give people concrete short-term goals that keep them motivated, help them understand exactly what they should be doing or focusing on, um, and give them those short-term goals so that they can feel accomplished, and make them reasonable, of course, so they feel accomplished when they make them. They need, they need to be clear about how they should move forward and what's expected of them. When people's minds are confused, when the priorities are getting confusing, when they're overwhelmed, they're not as good at their own creative problem solving and they're not as good at managing their time and deciding what to do. Some people will need you to help them understand what to do next. Uh, and also keep reminding the employees of why their work matters. What are we striving for? How are you helping employees? How are you helping the world? How are you helping our customers? What is the meaning of their work? And then lastly, if you can foster creativity and innovation in this time, you can get some really interesting outcomes. Um, you want to encourage experimentation, as I said earlier, encouraging people to try new things. And that means encouraging them to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Be okay with some failures and some trying things and really applaud people for trying something new, maybe something bold, where it's okay to try new things. Also, try to encourage, especially as we're all siloed in our own homes, Encourage collaboration and human connection, whether that's the uh, virtual happy hours a lot of people are having or having everyone on your team uh, be in a Google Hangout room all day so that anyone who wants to collaborate or talk or get feedback can just hop into that room. Try to eliminate the barriers to connecting with each other. So it's actually a psychological barrier to have to pick up the phone, dial someone's number, and talk to them. It just is, but it's a lot less of a barrier to uh, get on some sort of chat, Google chat, or you know, a hangout room that's already open. So just try to eliminate those barriers and get people connecting and collaborating and brainstorming. Now, lastly, in the new beginnings, and I'm not gonna spend as much time here because uh, most people aren't in that phase quite yet, but I'm happy to talk more about it uh, if you wanna give me a call. When you're getting into those new beginnings phases, you wanna reconnect again to purpose. Inspire people with the reason that the work is happening, the reason for our new strategy, the reason we're working this new way. Um, and, and remind them of that long-term vision of the future. And make sure you paint a tangible picture of that future that they can grab onto and feel and know what it's gonna look like and sound like when they've done this work. Number two, don't leave the pack behind. So some of you will be in this new beginnings, let's go, we're so excited about our direction right now. But remember that some people will still be in that lull. And if you leave them behind, 
it's not going to work. They'll either leave the company or you'll end up laying them off or firing them. It, it just it doesn't work if you leave people behind. So make sure you're still empathizing and knowing where people are and helping them through that curve. Also make a plan for the new vision. Clearly communicate that plan. It's going to be new for people as you come out of this crisis. There's going to be new strategy. There's going to be new ways of working. Communicate your plan and make sure that everybody knows their plan. Parts. How are they contributing to that vision, to that whole, to the plan? And then make sure your plan includes some quick wins and celebrate them so people feel excited about the new direction and feel like they're moving somewhere. And lastly, whatever change you're making in your company, in your strategy, in the way you work, make sure you're rewarding people for exhibiting that new change, whether it's public recognition, rewards, gratitude, whatever it is that can reward people for making the change. Now, I know that was a lot of presentation fast. Um, I want to thank you, and I want to, again, invite you to either email me at rachel at rachelevansgroup.com to set up a meeting if you want to get some coaching on your specific team and what you can do. I have a ton of tools that you can apply specifically to help your team through this dip in productivity and in engagement. Um, or uh, we'll have a link available for my calendar. You can just put a, uh, you can put, just put an hour on my calendar whenever it works for you at calendly.com slash Rachel Evans Group. Thank you so much. I hope that this has inspired you to understand your employees, understand yourself, and be incredibly motivated and engaged and successful coming out of this crazy time. Thanks again.